Hey everybody, Chris here from the ASP, and he, you are my guest. You are a special guest here on the ASP. Uh, today is actually the uh, VJ Day shoot. This is his first night, first time. Just introduce yourself. My name is Victor Verano, and I do Philippine Scout living history reenactments. And they invited me to come over here, and I had a blast. No pun intended. Um, it was fun, fun day. Oh yeah, you you fired your M1 Garand and your, your 1903 Springfield. I did. Um, what did you think of the events yeah. over here during the VJ Day shoot? One word, fun. It was it was fun. Um, you know, I've, I've participated in CMP matches where the rules are very stringent and, I mean, it's, they're still fun. Yeah. But what we did here where we went ahead and formed the skirmish line, shot prone, and then went forward, shot kneeling, and then standing, and then uh, shooting the 1911 at 25 yards, that was, that was a lot of fun. In uniform. So... I don't know how to describe it, but fine. Yeah. You know? And I got that on a video. I got that on a, my um, my contour uh, my contour go say contour GoPro type of uh, camera. So you fired your uh, M1. You fired your Springfield. Anything else? I need more practice. That's what it is. <laughs> don't we all? <laughs> don't we all? Need more practice and come back. You know. That's. Oh yeah. Next right. year. Next year. Next year. Next year. Yeah. Hopefully with more people. Oh yeah. We'll bring in some other people. Yeah. Or originally, the uh, Philippine Scout group in Virginia was supposed to come up here, but unfortunately they they uh, you could quote unquote chickened out. Um, coming from Virginia to New Jersey, yes, it's much of a hassle to drive, and here things come up, you know, and uh, they have to drop out. Yeah. Uh, so, but given enough time, I guess another year, yeah, they'll be able to reserve that weekend yeah. for, for the shoot. It's pretty fun. Exactly. Now, within the uh, Philippines, you're part of the Philippine Scouts uh, Heritage Society, correct? Yes, yes. I'm a member of the Philippine Scouts Heritage Society. Your position there? I'm the National Secretary of, of the uh, Society. Um, well, what it is, the, uh, the Society is... Uh, it was a veterans organization that they formed in 1984, the Philippine Scouts. Yeah. And um, it was a social organization, and it's both social and historical. And um, of course, when uh, now that the veterans have, many of them have passed away, it's uh, taking on more of a historical nature than a social one. It's still a social yeah. organization, but you know, the, with very few veterans left, uh, a lot of the focus go into the historical aspect of it. And, um, and that's what I like. I like the uh, historical aspect of it. I, I like the research, um, the living history aspect exactly. of it. Yeah, me too, me too, same and, here. Yeah. And actually, 2007, um, that was the first time that they invited a, a bunch of us to attend the Philippine Scouts Heritage Society reunion because they found out that there were Philippine Scout reenactors. And they were so, you should have seen the veterans. They were so happy to see us. Mm -hmm. they, they would take, you know, we were like celebrities. They would, they would take pictures with us. But for us, it was the other way around. Hey, look, it's the Philippine Scouts, real yeah. live Philippine Scouts that we've read in books. And we would be like, can we have a picture with you? Yeah, exactly. But they were like, look at you guys. You, you know, you're wearing what we wore, you know, and uh, they wanted a picture with us. So that was, that was a lot of fun um, all those years. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, now there's very few left. Yeah. But um, the times when there were 20, 30 of them in the reunion, that was great. That was great. And those meetings are held uh, in California? Well, it varies. It varies. Um, next year, it's going to be in San Antonio. Okay. Um, it, it changes around. In, 20, in 2018, in right? In 2018, okay. yes. It will be in San Antonio. Um, sometimes it's in Long Beach, California. Some, most recently, it was in San Francisco. Um, sometimes they, 
-hmm. It's held in uh, Tacoma, mm -hmm. Washington. Mm -hmm. Now, usually, it's um, it's these communities that had many of these veterans, uh, and um, but now it's you know as, as they pass away, yeah. uh, you know we're I guess we can we can decide you know other places that they to, to hold the reunions. Mm -hmm. um, since we can all travel, exactly. You know, um, but uh, there was one time they had it in the Philippines, and I couldn't go. They had it in uh, what was that? In 2012, mm -hmm. they had it at Fort Stotzenberg. Okay. And um, there were three 26 cavalrymen who traveled back to the Philippines really? for that. Yes. And then there were a couple of other. Uh, uh, Philippine scout veterans who lived in the Philippines also attended. So I'm sorry I missed that one, but that was that was a lot of fun too. That was. That was. Yeah. So since you brought your M1 Garin, would you mind showing a quick showing it to the camera? All right. Quickly. That's his. Obviously. M1 Garin. The Philippine scouts were the first to use the M1 in combat, in ground combat. Um, because when war started, the ground combat was in the Philippines. And at that time, there weren't enough M1 Garands to, to go around the whole, you know, U.S. Army, U.S. military in the Philippines. But the infantry, the cavalry, combat engineers, they had them. Um, so there were about 7,000 M1 Garands in, in the Philippines, and they were used effectively in, in Bataan. Mm -hmm. So... Um, but there were a lot of 1903s and Enfields, 1917s. Oh boy. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's his. Obviously, this is. His. And there's also footage of me firing the uh, Type 38 carbine. Type 38 was used during the invasion of the Philippines by the Japanese. Um, when Philippine units had to retreat, obviously when they uh, became guerrillas, they had to do uh, procurement, battlefield uh, capture, and this is an example of one of them. I don't know much of the history of this Type 38 carbine. I just gotta get more of them. Um, I gotta do more research. Obviously there's the bayonet on. And you had a bayonet with I and yeah. you, had, you, had, you had an attack. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, I think unfortunately, I didn't have that on camera. Um, I didn't get you. Good, you. Did. I did. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did. did. Yeah, you yeah. Did. Exactly. You did. Okay. I'm showing my age. So, anyways, um, I got you on. Just camera. don't show the score. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got to show the score. Here's the thing. Whenever I release or yeah, whenever I release videos over here on. Marksmanship <laughs> shooting events always get comments. Well, what's the score? You got your you're videoing the rifle, the shooter. What's the score? Well, yeah, we had we, we took pictures, yeah, or a video of yeah. the sheet, and yeah. uh, but you see, it was two clips. In one clip, I think I shot a little too high, um, and then the, the the first clip was right on. Yeah, maybe it was the other way around. I'm not sure. But you could clearly tell that one group is up here, the other group is right there in the black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but you had two minutes to fire. You had to fire. You had to, you hit the uh, one of the events was you have to fire. You have to fire two clips. Uh, two three, minutes. Yeah, in two minutes. With a bayonet. With the bayonet and, and the helmet. Helmet. So. And you know I've never shot with a bayonet before. It it's heavy. Yeah, the bayonet's yeah. heavy. The balance of the rifle is very different with the bayonet. It's now. a little different, yeah. And you know, what I keep telling people who uh, who haven't shot, 100 yards with that, that small black target, it's pretty small. Yeah. It's pretty small, and uh, it's not like we have a scope or anything. So, if you hit the black, you're doing good. Yeah. And even if you don't hit the black, but you still see your, your, your hole, your bullet hole, if that's a mad sized target, it's still effective. It's still you effective. still hit the target. Exactly. You know, so. exactly. So, next time, you're going to get more guys coming here? I are hope you, so. Are you going to bring uh, more uh, toys? 
more toys that you have in your collection? I wish I had more toys. But <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> I wish I had more toys. But uh, I'll try to bring more guys, you know, in uniform and it'll be it'll be fun. It'll be yeah. a blast. And possibly, hopefully, if I can um, present the idea of doing a bayonet charge next year. Ooh. Put the bayonet on, and then we'll go around, charge down at the tw uh, from starting point down at the 100 yards, starting point down all the way down to the 25, bayonet charge, load up eight rounds, bang, 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 pain, or even with the bolt. And then... Now that you gotta yeah. take a video of. It. Yeah, I got to. I have to. I have to. The thing is, I could, we couldn't do it today because of um, the range rules, the organization right. here. Right. I gotta propose it to them, and they have to approve it. Now, obviously, there's gonna be a lot of, uh, you know, safety concerns. Right, right. That. But well, you know what we can do? Um, we could do a photo shoot. Uh, no firing. Maybe uh, we could all guys in uniform. Yeah. We can probably do a photo shoot. Oh, yeah. In the woods. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. That would be cool. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So, guys, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm going to be releasing a lot more content. And uh, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe. I do have a Patreon. Uh, become a patron. Um, right now with YouTube and funding, obviously I'm also affected like similar channels. So uh, become a patron and we'll go from there. So Victor, thank you for thank coming. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting. Oh, no problem, man. Anytime. Anytime, anytime, anytime. And thanks.